Hey, welcome back to the channel. So, uh, yeah, I've been seeing a lot of these ready to fly and bind to fly um, models that are coming with a DJI Vista unit, and <clears throat> they're being sold for not much more than the Vista unit costs. Um, one of them that I saw recently was called, is, is uh, it's quite a common one. Uh, they've brought out a couple of different versions of it now, uh, the Transtech Beetle. Uh, in particular, the one that I had my eye on was the uh, Transtech Beetle Mini, and it goes for about two hundred and ten pounds, uh, and it comes with a Vista. Now, in the UK, yeah, you buy a DJI Vista, it's going to cost you at least a hundred and fifty pounds. So that's seventy pounds for frame, motors, flight controller, ESC, uh, and. And it's all built and put together, and presumably they come uh, tuned. Somebody has actually flown it and, and tuned it. So I'm going to look into uh, I'm going to look into that today and uh, show you what what my results are. So like I haven't bought a ready to fly my since my first ever drone uh, almost five years ago. Um, so yeah, back then on Banggood, <laughs> the yeah, I bought a whole kit that came with a transmitter. An FPV screen and and a whole pre-built ready-to-fly quad called the Eashin Racer 250. Check out a picture of it here. So yes, it had headlights and a smiley face and a camera that you couldn't tilt more than about five or ten degrees. <laughs> Plastic arms, um, a PCB built into the bottom plate of the frame, and yeah. Uh, needless to say, it was it was pretty, shit, but it did it did get me in the air and it got me addicted to FPV. Uh, but that was the only one I purchased that was all pre-built because uh, yeah, I just constantly had to repair it anyway. I just didn't see the point in uh, buying a pre-built one. Um, I wanted to choose my own parts, and I, I really, I actually a big part of the hobby for me is actually building the quad myself, uh, knowing how it all works so that I can repair it if, when I break it. But I can see the draw to people uh, wanting a pre-built, ready-to-fly, buy-and-fly model simply if they haven't got enough time to build one. Maybe they're trying to get a friend into the hobby and they don't want to take the risk of um, saying, yeah, I've built all this myself, so if anything goes wrong with it. You know, if you've bought a pre-built, if you tell someone to buy a pre-built quad from a shop, if there's anything wrong with it, they can go back to the shop and get, you know, they they can sort it out that way, so you're a little bit less responsible for it. Uh, for me, yeah, I'm not so sure. Maybe it's worth it if the parts and the actual quad that you get with the Vista is going to be good enough to fly around until all, like, say, the frame breaks or the motors are all completely knackered, and then you can take the Vista out and put it into something a lot better. You know, like a like an Odin. Banggood have sent me over this. So this is the Transtech Beetle Mini, or at least it should be. Uh, the box actually says Beetle Hom, which I and it's got prop guards on the picture, um, whereas the model that I ordered doesn't. So, kind of thinking that they're just reusing the the boxes from the other models. But let's head over to the bench, crack this open, and uh, see what we get in the box. Um, then we'll go on to we'll plug it in and see what they've done with beta flight, what version of the firmware, uh, what settings they've put on there. See if they've done anything uh, other than just putting default firmware on there. Um, yeah, and I'll let you know my thought. Well, and then of course we'll uh, we'll take it out and fly it. So um, yeah, let's head over to the bench now. Okay, so here we are on the bench. Um, <laughs> it's just. I just don't understand how you could get all the other parts. The frame, this one comes with like a canopy thing. Uh, how you can get all that for just 70 quid when the motors I run for a set of four cost 50. The flight controller, all in one board that I'm putting in my Odin builds, they cost 60. So how can you get all of that for 70? So anyway, yeah, let's, uh, let's crack this open and have a look. I'm in. I'm into the first layer. Right. Oh, here we go. Ta-da! Oh. 
So, there you go. That's pretty cool. So, got an empty Cadex Vista box, which is a bit weird. There are prop cards. Six prop cards. Dropped one. Uh, little 3D printed parts and rubber battery strap. Some nuts and bolts. Some bolts. Obviously, this is the quad. I mean, look at that. Look how small the arms are compared to the rest of the body. How the hell is this gonna... This is not... This is not gonna fly good. And it's like, why are there two of those? Vista only has one antenna, so... Obviously they've only attached one, so that's a bit weird. But... Um... Okay, right, so there's... Wow. Okay. Um... Yeah, I mean... Hmm. It's interesting, it's quite heavy. Seems as though it's only going to be a little two inch. Um, 3D print, the pictures of the 3D print look awful, but this is actually quite nice. Yeah, quite nicely 3D printed. All right, we get a little uh, packet with, uh, what's in here? Oh, props, okay, good. Little pack of two inch props. Oh wow, instructions. Let's see how good these are. Okay, so yeah, tells you what you've got. Tells you how to connect things up. Yeah, you know, basic stuff, but it's stuff that you need. And they've got it in Chinese, just in case you want to read it in Chinese. So you, oh wow, okay, so. For this £70, you actually get two free, well, not free, you get two extra um, plastic uh, top plate type things that hold the uh, little LED strip there. That's mad, all of that. I mean, <clears throat> you can't deny for the price, you're getting, you're getting quite a lot for the money. I mean, just take the take the Vista out. Say you got the Vista from Banggood. I'm not sure how much they are. Uh, they're probably a little bit cheaper than 150 quid, but I know they're not a lot cheaper. I just got some on the sale, and they cost me 110 pounds each. So let's just say it cost 110. This whole thing, 220. So yeah, half the cost is the Vista and the camera, obviously. So for 110 quid. If you built an Odin with an all-in-one Betaflight board and 1404 Zing motors, which were obviously a lot better quality than these and uh, more powerful as well, the frame's gonna be, the frame is better as well and lighter, and it can hold all exactly the same setup as this. Apart from it doesn't have this plastic thing with the LEDs on it. Yeah, I'd be looking at like 110 just for motors and the all-in-one, and then the frame is 28 quid so uh yeah so for 28 pounds more than than this i'd have an odin i guess um that doesn't include yeah this it's not really a lot cheaper than building premium so i'm building it but i'm building it yourself so i mean they take me like an i enjoy building them so Having it pre-built isn't appealing to me as such, but maybe maybe it is appealing to you. So soldering is actually probably better than my own. And I can't. Uh, looks like they've wired in the S bus for the Vista, so they're expecting you to fly it with a DJI transmitter. I'm gonna have to try and figure out a way to wire in um, TBS Crossfire, so and somewhere to mount the Immortal T, so. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's it so far. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wire in a crossfire and then plug it into Betaflight to set up the crossfire and check out the setup.
So, yeah, I'll check back in with you at my computer. Right, so I've now fitted a uh, Crossfire Nano in there. You can see I've got the Immortal T just hanging out because uh, don't really know, don't really know where to <laughs> where to mount it. That's one thing uh, that isn't great about this this uh, quad, this frame, this whole setup basically is uh, it's not really designed that well for running a different uh, receiver on it other than DJI obviously if you're using the DJI transmitter um, you don't need to wire in another receiver, it's got it built into the Vista you're just bind to your controller and away you go and uh, I presume that the flight controller is already all set up for the uh, DJI controller because when you go to buy it there is no option to have it come with Crossfire. Now uh, in the instructions in the instructions however it does tell you that uh, you can fit an external receiver uh, you just cut off the SBUS wire from the Vista and wire in a 5 volt off the flight controller just above the uh, USB that's probably not going to focus so yeah, just above the USB-C, there's a little 5 volt out and a U up broken out. So yeah, I've just run the 5 volt up into my Crossfire, cut the S bus pad off of the Vista and wired that into the the Crossfire. Um, yeah, I'm gonna plug it in now. Uh, I don't want to change any any settings, uh, but inevitably I'm I'm going to have to change it from SBUS to Crossfire because I'm using Crossfire obviously and I'm gonna have to probably change the um, the mode switches because I've been using the same configuration for so long I'm gonna have to change that but if you're new to the hobby I mean you could just use whatever comes with it and that'll be your your setup so first thing to look at is uh, what version of Beta Flight is on it um, 4.1.5 so it's pretty new it's not the latest and greatest but it will have basically all the features that you'd want in beta flight so that's a good start uh, so they've already got MSP set up for uh, the DJI telemetry and they've already got the your receiver set up on UART1 so that all looks good Going over to the configuration tabs, you can see that they have done reverse motor direction. So I'm going to have to uh, remember to put the props on the wrong way. So I never, I've never tried that. Only running 4K, 4K, not, not terrible, but okay. Maximum arm angle only 90 degrees. So basically, that means that if you're more than 90 degrees. <coughs> at more than 90 degrees and stuck in a tree uh, it won't let you arm it to get it out so that's the first thing we're going to change change that to 180 uh, you may or may not have to change this but I've got to put it on crossfire LED strip is enabled because it's got one air mode on all the time I usually have it on the switch but I'll leave that there for now um, only having it on RX set means that if you fail safe or your receiver breaks or something and you can't connect to the quad, you won't be able to do the beeper. So I always put RX loss on and I like beacon tone number three. So I'm going to change that. I don't. USB, you want to turn that off as well so there isn't beeping when you're plugged in to beta flight. Hit save and reboot. Looks like the uh, accelerometer is calibrated already. Okay, so <clears throat> this means that there <laughs> there isn't a current sensor, so I'm not going to have any idea. Uh, <laughs> not going to have any idea how much I've taken out of the battery. So that's. I don't even remember the last time I used a, a quad that didn't have a current sensor, so that's a bit weird, but we'll leave it there. PID tuning. <laughs> I 
As you can see, the sliders are all in the middle, so it, this is just default PIDs. They haven't bothered to tune it at all. Is there anything on any of the others? Profile 2, default. Profile 3, default. So the PIDs are all default, so they're just going to presume it's going to fly OK on uh, stock PIDs, and you've just got to hope for the best, so we will. We'll see what that's like. I'm sure, I think it'll probably be fine. Like, I almost, almost all my quads I fly on stock PIDs to start with, so it's probably going to be fine, but it is a bit disappointing that they haven't adjusted those, because on a 3S battery on 1104 motors with something that weighs as much as this, I can tell you right now that they're probably going to need to be almost double. So, we'll see. Uh, rate profile, yeah. Uh, okay, so 3.1.5 doesn't have actual rates, so... Um, yeah, I've got used to flying actual rates. Uh, they have adjusted the rates, I think. Let me see. Yeah, stock rates are uh, uh, 667 degrees, 1.0 and uh, 0.7 on the super rate. What they've done is reduced the RC rate slightly and the super rate quite a lot so that you can get that down a little bit. It's going to feel a little bit spongier in the middle. Uh, I should put my own rates in there, really. Um, I think this is what it is, I can't remember because I've gone on to actual rates, but these are my race rates anyway, so I'm going to leave race rates on profile 1, uh, then profile 2, I'm going to put my Uh, these aren't exact, but I like about a thousand degrees a second. Hit save. Just gonna go back to save it on profile one. Filter settings. Let's have a look. All stock filters. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, this all looks just default. You can usually tell because the sliders are there and in the middle. Right, going on over here, uh, this is all default as well. So they haven't actually bothered to select DAER, which is what I use. I also like to have RSSI, thank you. Uh, so for Crossfire, it's, I have it on AUX8. Those, I'm pretty sure they're all default. I'm just going to leave them like that. Okay, so my receiver isn't powered over USB, so I'm going to have to plug a battery in to check that. Right, so they have... Okay, so they have... Arming on AUX3. <coughs> I use AUX1. Like that. Angle mode, I use AUX2 for my mode select switch. I'm not going to be using angle mode, but... Uh, I guess I'll leave it on there. Beeper I have on AUX3 and I do have it at the end. I haven't enabled turtle mode. Probably doesn't work. Not sure any really. so small it's hmm. No, yeah, it should work. It should work. So yeah, I have flip over crash on AUX4. So yeah, that's not bad. They had at least had it had some modes set up, but of course, depending on what transmitter you're using and what switches you want the modes on, you're probably, you're probably going to, that's quite an important one to go in and change. Uh, adjustment servos, don't need to do right now, motors will all come back to. Video transmitter shouldn't be anything there because it's using DJI. LED strip, so they have set something up on here. Christ, it has been a long time since I used um, LED strip. <laughs> okay, yeah, like I said, addressable LEDs. Like, I haven't used these for maybe three years. Um, just a bit of a pain in the butt to... Um, 
Well, they're not. They, they were quite easy to use, to be fair, but I've completely forgotten how it works, so I'm not going to save. I'm just going to leave that. <laughs> Sensors, ignore that. Uh, Tether, don't need. No login. That's fine. So, just to double check, uh, when you get a new quad and it's been set up for you, you can just go straight into the CLI and type in diff all. This is going to bring up uh, every setting that has been changed. And as you can see, the list is really short on this thing. Uh, they've changed the name. Well, yeah, they've changed the name. Uh, some of these I've changed. Those two I changed myself. They've done some LED settings, some AUX settings, which I've changed myself. Uh, they've calibrated it. I put the RSSI channel on. I changed that. They set to that. Beeper I changed, but and that I changed anyway. So it looks like basically everything that they have changed uh, is all just personal. Is either <laughs> there's only really one thing that they've set that I haven't had to go in and change anyway. So yes, it comes set up, but it's they've done like mm. the bare minimum just to get it going. So. Uh, yeah, that's a bit, that sucks a bit, but it's all good. Uh, I've got a, char I got a battery charging right now, so uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is plug a battery in, test that your uh, transmitter is connected to the receiver, bind it if you need to, then go back in, then plug it back into Betaflight with a battery plugged in so that you can test that the motors are working and all your switches are being picked up from the transmitter to the receiver. So you're just going to want to plug it all in. Go to your receiver tab and check your centers and stick ends, so you should be able to go from 1000 to 2000 or below and above. I'm not going to tell you how to set your radio up but um, yeah you should be able to go into your outputs go into your output screen I know you're not going to be able to see that properly but go into your output screen and just, uh, just adjust your endpoints and your sub trim so that it's all nice and centered. You can see all mine is working, switches are working. You can see them working in there. So yeah, just go into your motors tab, fire up your motors. Make sure they're all spinning the wrong way in this case. So outwards. And they are. So that's all good. Uh, the next step is to bind and update the uh, Vista to my goggles so they're all running on the same firmware. Um, do the uh, the FCC, you know what. <laughs> and um, yeah, then we'll be ready for a test hover. So. Uh, if you need to learn how to do that, then just go and look for a video on how to bind Vista and set that up. Um, this is all, yeah, this is all about the quad. But as far as the setup goes, they haven't done any uh, any changes to the firmware really. Uh, none that you wouldn't have to do anyway. So yeah, uh, LED looks cool though. It's nice and bright. So I'm gonna have to try and find somewhere for the crossfire that doesn't actually obscure that. Cause yeah, that's gonna look cool. Um, so yeah. I'm going to go bind that to my DJI, do all the updates and everything, and then it's going to be ready to go. So I think I'm going to, next time I see you, I'm going to be out in the field. So I took the Transtech Beetle along with me to um, a little meet up with friends to do some racing. And after I'd got through all my 4S packs of flying my 3-inch um, and four, uh, 5-inch DJI racers, um, I thought it was time to give the Transtech Beetle its maiden flight. Um, <laughs> the, my mates thought it'd be funny if I just uh, tried to race with it, so um, yeah, I took it out on the racetrack and as you can see it just did not have anywhere near enough power to do any sort of race manoeuvres, sharp turns, split S's, anything like that, it has not got, it's just too heavy. The power to weight ratio is just uh, far too 
low. Um, <clears throat> it just has not got enough power for the for the amount that it weighs. Uh, in comparison, it weighs the same as my three inch Odin. Obviously, it's two inch props and against three inch props with much more powerful motors. So yeah, it just seems like the only thing that it was really good at was just like cruising around in a straight line um so and exploring so because it's it's quite small uh again it's actually the overall size of it is actually the same size as my three inch odin so yeah, my three inch can fit in all the same places that this can but this has got prop guards on which has been quite nice you can kind of bounce off things but usually these little three inch props are quite durable so that it's not like they just break as soon as you hit anything so it kind of flies a lot like a tiny whoop really but obviously with uh, DJI so it's, you've got HD and yeah it just flies even when it's in uh, I didn't even fly angle mode but in acro mode it just feels like all it wants to do is fly upright doesn't like doing any maneuvers it just hasn't got the power to catch itself so there's a little cruise around uh, quad that's quite safe because of the prop guards I think it's a really good option um, but if you're going to be wanting to do anything else with it then certainly on 3s it just doesn't have the power and it's really loud as well so I mean if if you uh, running it on 4s I didn't even bother trying it the motors are 6800 kV which honestly on 4s is just bonkers even on two inch props I think that's just a bit that's a bit mad so <clears throat> I'll probably give it a try and see if uh, it can actually handle it um, and see what the difference is so yeah check back in the next video and I will run it on 4s if that's what you want to see but yeah overall not bad but for 70 80 quid more I'd much rather build a full premium high spec quad with more powerful motors and three inch props um, but yeah, if this is something you're looking for, check out the link in the description and uh, go and buy it. Laters.